Welcome to episode 7, and now we're actually going to start editing our content and really styling it up in CSS. So we learned how to create the basic HTML template, we linked up our CSS page, and now we're just going to go change the styling of a few different elements. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to create a paragraph in my body here with the P tag. And I will grab a quick paragraph and throw that in there. Okay. So now if we preview this, all we're going to see is that text. Now let's just say we want that text to be red. So let's open up our style sheet. And what we have to understand is that CSS is kind of a two part process. The first part is telling the browser which elements to target and the second part is telling it which attributes to apply to that target. So for example now we have to tell the browser that every P element has to have a color of red. So to do that we can just type a P then an open curly bracket and then type in those attributes. Now after all the attributes are typed in, we type a closed curly bracket. So this is the basic setup here. So we have an element here, and then inside these curly brackets we can type whatever we want, whatever styles apply. Now we don't have to just say P. There are other things that we can target, and we'll get into that in a second. So first of all, let's change the color of the text to red. To do that, all we have to do is type color a colon, then red, and a semicolon. So all we really did is saying that every P element has to have this style of color red. So we can actually go ahead and preview this. Now I'm using Coda right now and Coda doesn't have the best support for style sheets so I'm going to actually preview this in my browser but you'll see that the color of this paragraph is indeed red. And so let's look at different ways to target this P element. If we go back into our HTML and we create another paragraph here, just enter any text, we could see that it's always going to be red because in CSS we apply this to all P tags, not just the first one, all of them. But let's say you don't necessarily want that. You only want this paragraph here to be red. So the way we do this is mainly by the use of classes or IDs. And these are just attributes that you can stick on via HTML. So in this P element, I'm going to add an attribute of class and set that to red text. Now we have to call that class. So instead of P, I'm going to type a period and then red text. And now you can see that only this second paragraph has the color of red. Now anytime you want to call a class you always put a period before it and then you always specify the class of the element in HTML. Now I also mentioned we can use IDs so to do that it's practically the same thing so instead of class equals red text I'm going to type an ID and then I'll give this paragraph an ID of red P and just like that. Now in style.css I'm going to type red P but instead of putting a period before it I'm going to put a pound sign and then type red P and that will work the same way. IDs are typically only used when you have one of that element on the page something that's a really important unique element. Classes are usually used when you're going to have multiple elements that you want to have the same styling. It has been pretty much proven that CSS can style IDs just a bit faster than classes, but you should never use just IDs because of that. Now this pretty much works the same with any elements that you want. So for example, even if I'm mid-paragraph here, so let's say I want one sentence to be read. I can add a span here. 
like we were saying, this band has really uh, no additional attributes applied by default. It kind of is just a clean slate for your styles. So right there, I just applied a span. Now in CSS, if I change this to target all spans, we will see that that sentence is red. <clears throat> so let's say I wanted one of these sentences to be red and I wanted another sentence to be blue. So I'll give this one a class of red and I'll give this sentence a class of blue. Now I'm gonna change this to dot red then I'm gonna say dot blue color blue. Now if we preview this you can see that one of the sentences is red and one of them is blue. Now as for other colors you can see when I was typing them in there's a whole bunch of different colors that CSS supports silver, teal, yellow, whatever you need but you, you aren't limited to just these colors. So if you look up hexadecimal colors, you can, there's a whole slew of colors that you can enter. Even in Photoshop, when you are picking a color, it has a hex value uh, near the bottom right that you can just copy and paste in. So just Google hexadecimal color codes if you're not really sure what that is. So for example, I could type something like, uh, E, e, e and I should get a light gray there we go it's a very light gray if you can see that so that's pretty much how you can target different elements and those aren't the only ways there are a lot more ways there are a lot more selectors I should say and a lot more pseudo selectors and we will go over those as we need them for right now you're probably only going to need to either target elements or classes or IDs. So let's go over some more attributes that we can apply. I'm gonna just take out all my spans here and just leave this as a plain old paragraph. There we go. And now let's say I want to set the font of this paragraph. Now the font is kind of annoying when you're making a website because you have a very limited range of fonts. So I'm going to go into font book here and I have a whole folder called web and these are pretty much the only fonts that you should use. There are other fonts that are web safe but uh, these are the ones that I've pretty much found that every computer is practically going to have. And uh, Andel Mono Arial Arial Black Brush Script MT Comic Sans Georgia Impact Times New Roman, Trebuchet MS, Verdana, and Webdings. Um, most computers should have that. If you're really worried about compatibility, then I would stick to Arial, Comic Sans, Georgia, in, not Impact, uh, Times New Roman, Trebuchet MS, and Verdana. I would just stick to those fonts. Now, this is kind of annoying because it is uh, hard to create a website using only these fonts. Uh, so that's why usually if you needed to insert a logo or something you could just use any image editor and just put the image right on your website rather than you know creating it all using HTML and CSS however if you do want to use a custom font you can google font replacement methods for web and we're gonna be going over a bunch of them one of my favorites is Google font API and it really easily allows you to just hook up, you know, whatever font you like with pretty much no cons. And we'll be going over that. <clears throat> anyway, let's look at how to actually set this font. So right now, by default, it's Times New Roman. That's not going to be the same for all systems. That's just because my preferences say that the default font should be Times New Roman. Here it is, standard font times 16. So to change the font that's applied, we're going to use font-family. And now we're going to type in whatever font it is. So I'm going to type in Helvetica. 
and put a semicolon. And if we go and preview this, you'll see that the font is Helvetica. However, let's just pretend that for whatever reason, someone has Helvetica turned off because it does happen, it is possible. Well, that's when we start developing a font stack where we pretty much set alternatives for if a user doesn't have a certain font. So let's just say if the user doesn't have Helvetica, it should fall back to Arial. So all we have to do is type a comma and then we'll type in Arial. Now we're not going to see anything. It's going to stay the same for us because we do have Helvetica turned on, but any machines that don't will see Arial. The one last thing you want to include in your font stack is you want to pretty much always either include sans serif, serif, or mono space. And I'm just going to use sans serif because that's what Helvetica and Arial are. So that's just saying if they don't have either one of these, it's going to go to whatever sans serif font the system has. So the user will at least get the gist of how our website looks. Now, other than that, we can set the font weight. So you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different attributes, I shouldn't say attributes, I should say um, styles that we can apply for the font weight attribute. And you can see it goes from 100 to 900 here, and then there's a few words at the bottom. So usually you don't want to use any of these numbers unless you specifically know what variations the font has. So there are a lot of fonts that have ultra light, light, medium, bold, ultra bold, and just a whole bunch of various weights like that. And a lot of times these fonts will give what the weights are. So maybe ultra light will be 100, light will be 300, something like that. So if you do know what number it is, you can enter that in. If you don't, you can just type something like bold. And when we preview it, you'll see that it's bold. Now there's a whole bunch of other things. So let's go to font size. And this, you will see that in my little uh, selection window, it only says large, large, or medium, etc. But you can enter pretty much anything. So I'm going to type in 28 pixels. And now it's 28 pixel font. Now. If you're using something like Photoshop, a lot of times uh, the font declarations in there are in points, um, but that's easily changed via the settings to any other size. But if you do want to leave it in points, you can just type that in. So 28 points, and that's a little bit bigger. We can use percents too, 20%. And that's going to be 20% of the default font size. So the default was 16. Now it is much smaller, 20% of that. So there's a whole lot of different things you can do here. Uh, I'll stick this at 13 pixels. Go and preview this. There we go. I'm not going to show you every single text effect that there is in this one episode and we're going to be looking at more as we progress through the series, but I'll show you a few more that are really neat and interesting. So let's try making this italics. So to do that, we're going to say font style is italic. And if we preview it now, you can see it's italic here. And you might have just seen I had a little underline on that before I refreshed that window. To do that, it's actually a property called text decoration. And that can be sent to underline here. And if you saw while I was typing that, there's a whole bunch of other things you could do, like line through, which is like the strike through. Uh, tag that we saw in the HTML episodes. So you can even apply that to your text. And if just say we want to align this centered, we could say text align is center. And it even supports justify too. If you really want to get a nice effect, if you want to mimic something that you've made, 
it can just be set to justify and you'll see that over here every line ends at uh, the same point and those are just the basic text uh, styles that you can apply and of course there's a lot more to that than just these in CSS and when we actually go and make a working website we'll look at a few more of them but these to me are the most important that you're gonna use the most uh, in the next episode we're going to be looking at more box effects for example uh, backgrounds and borders so be sure to watch that one